Today we're doing part two of Kamigawa Signature Spells. This time we're looking at the instance. Welcome back to the Signature Spell Bomb YouTube channel. I'm not going to waste a lot of time here. Let's just get right into it. So I'm just going to go through these kind of one by one and give you my read. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. Ambitious Assault costs two and red. It's going to pump all of our creatures, which is pretty good for a signature spell. It does care about modified creatures, so it's a deck you kind of don't want to build around. But it is something to think about. So not terrible. Sorry about that. Assassin's Inc. costs one less to cast if we control an artifact and enchantment, so that's quite a few hoops to jump through to destroy target creature. As I've said in the past, I don't like destroy targets. Um, I don't like single target removal as a signature spell because it gets too expensive too fast and it just simply doesn't have enough utility in most cases. Boon of Beseju for one and a green. We get to pump a creature we control. It is going to be based on the greatest mana value among creatures we control. So this is best in a ramp deck or a deck where we're going to create just way more mana than we could ever need. Get to the Kami. Uh, target opponent exiles a creature they control, or target opponent exiles an enchantment they control. In the current format, this actually isn't bad, and I do like modular cards as signature spells because they allow us a little bit more leeway with the things we're trying to do. This one is still single target removal, so I'd say it's okay. I wouldn't say it's good. Discover the impossible. We're going to dig deep into our deck, exile one of the cards, put the rest on the bottom of our library. We can cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. If it's an instant with mana value two or less, if we don't, we draw the card. For three mana, being able to get any card off the top of our library, the top five cards of our library, is really good. It's actually a good signature spell. It's going to be good as a budget option for combo decks, especially since it's sitting at about 25 cents to a dollar. Disrupt Protocol for two blue. It says additional cost cast spell tap an untapped artifact you control. Right now, we've got a lot of those floating around, and it is a counter spell. You can run counters as your signature uh, spell, but I would hesitate to tell you it's a good idea because, again, it's basically single target removal. And it puts everybody on the table on edge. Everybody is going to be constantly afraid that you're going to be countering their signature spell or something important to them. So it can make you into a soft target for other players. Essence Capture is a reprinted spell. I've, again, counter spells, single target removal. Flame Discharge is going to deal X damage target creature Planeswalker. So that's actually pretty good because we do like Planeswalker removal in our command zone. Again, it might make you a soft target for other players, so it's a little bit better than okay. Um, if you have a modified creature, you're going to deal X plus 2 damage instead. So uh, This is the only invoke card that didn't make the previous video because it's the only one I believe that's an instant. We can cast up to two instants or sorcerer cards with total mana value 6 or less from our graveyard without paying those costs. Um, only in mono red is where I'd play this. There are a lot of things that care about, you know, exiling right now, which is pretty good. Five mana is not bad, and instant speed makes this, I think, better than the other invoke cards. But again, like I said, on the uh, white one and on the uh, blue one, it's really going to depend on what you get out of your graveyard or what you get to take, you know, what you get to do. So this card varies in value depending on what's actually going on in the game. Omni's Flare for one red deals three damage to our creature or Planeswalker. It also deals two damage to that permanence controller if we control a modified creature. Again, it's basically single target removal that may sometimes have a bonus. Get Old Fury is plus one plus oh and first strike until end of turn. This one doesn't really do much for me. I feel like this is pretty bad as a signature spell. Lethal Exploit is going to, again, be single target removal. A lot of these are going to be that, and you're going to see that I just don't favor that as a signature spell, because at two mana, this isn't a bad cost, and maybe even at three, if you have modified creatures, it's not a bad cost. 
But above this, you basically stop playing your signature spell. It's a good choice if you're building decks where you don't care about your signature spell. But then why play Oathbreaker? Uh, Light the Way is a modular spell. It can put a 1-1 counter on a creature or vehicle and untap it. That's actually very good because that's kind of like pseudo vigilance. It can surprise opponents. It's less surprising when it's in your command zone because they're going to kind of say you're common. And we can return target permanent we control to our owner's hand. So it is also a rescue spell. You can kind of think of it as a soft blink spell. It's okay, but something like Ephemerate or, I don't know, there's just other blink spells where you don't have to actually pay to recost what you're returning that are going to be better in most cases. March of Burgeoning Life. Cost X and a green. We're going to be able to reduce its cost by two for each green card. We're going to be willing to remove from our hand as we cast it. We choose target creature with mana value X or less and search our library for a creature card with the same name as that creature and put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. In 90% of decks, this is just bad. You know, it's going to be okay in decks where the creature literally says on it, you can have any number of cards, any number of copies of this card in your deck, or you can have up to seven dwarves. In those cases, it actually gets you something each time. The fact that we can remove cards from our hand from the game to basically take care of the mana tax it does make it replayable, but it's not like good for our format. March of Otherworldly Light is pretty much the same thing. We can exile white cards from our hand to reduce its cost by two. We exile her artifact creature enchantment with mana value X or less. So this is single target removal, but because it does have that mana reduction line that can kind of let us cheat the commander tax, I do feel like this is one of the better Ones if you do want to choose a single target removal as a signature spell. March of Reckless Joy. We exile the top X cards of our library. We may play up to two of those cards until end of turn. So what I don't like about this is it does have that we can remove cards from our hand to reduce the cost. That does take care of the mana cost. No matter what we do, though, we never get to play more than two of those cards. But we do have to exile all the cards from the top of our library. So... I don't think it's going to be great because we are, it is a high risk card. And if that's the type of deck you're playing, you want to do something chaotic, it's great for that. But I probably wouldn't run it as a signature spell in most cases. March of Swirling Mist. Um, we up to X target creatures phase out. This is actually fairly useful because it may not look like it, but this card actually has two modes. The first note is saving or protecting our army, which is great. So we're probably going to use it that way more than once. So having that commander tax reduction is great. But also it's really good for, I don't know, removing opponent's attackers or blockers until, you know, the next turn when they would phase back in. So this can actually stop us from taking a major hit and also clear the way for a bunch of players to make hits on on one player. It's it's X creatures too, so you don't have to target just one player. You can actually do some nutty things. March of Richard Sorrow deals X damage to our creature planeswalker, you gain X life. This is very similar to the white one with the added bonus that it hits planeswalkers. I don't like single target removal. Again, it's made better by its first ability of exiling black cards from our hand to reduce its cost by two. Master's Rebuke, I actually uh, like. I like these bite effects. I don't feel like we get them often enough. I understand why, because it can be a little bit too powerful, but it is the removal green gets. It's okay, maybe a little bit less than okay. Um, the cost is where we would expect it to be. The fact that we can use it to hit Planeswalkers is why it's, it's in a better place, in my opinion. But that's kind of all i got to say about that. Plan our incision. You know, it's a blink spell. We exile a permanent and we re uh, artifact or creature specific and we turn it to the battlefield with a 1 1 counter on it. The reason I like this is it, with all the vehicles we got in Camargella, it actually soft increased the power of vehicles. So, something to think about. Also, for running planeswalkers that can become creatures, well, actually, I guess there's not really a blue creature planeswalker, you know, planeswalker that turns into a creature. I kind of hope we get one of those soon, because right now only uh, white, red, and green kind of have that. So it would be interesting to see that on some blue creatures in the future, or blue planeswalkers in the future, I should say. 
Reality Heist costs one less cast for each artifact we control. I really wish they had just printed Affinity on it, because most people know what that means, but since it would be the only card in the set, I do kind of get why they didn't. Look at the top seven cards of our library. We may reveal two artifact cards from among them and put them into our hand, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. I often play Thought Cast as a signature spell in an artifact heavy deck, because even at four in a blue, I can usually get it down to one blue mana, pay that one blue, draw two cards, and then not too long down the road, get two more artifacts and play it again and again and again. Rally Heist is on one level much better than Thought Cast because it digs you deeper into your de deck and it still gets you two cards. But you do have to be running a lot more artifacts because you could non non-bow, you could just have a terrible time, look at the top seven if you're not running enough artifacts and get nothing. I would say between the two, I still prefer Thought Cast, but there is a real argument for running this instead, especially because its cost is still low. I think enough people haven't noticed this card yet as a potential signature spell. Uh, Reckoner's Bargain for one in black. We have to sacrifice a creature to use it, and then we gain life equal to the sacrifice permanence mana value and draw two cards. This is just another uh, deadly dispute. Uh, village right, something of that nature, where the, we have to sacrifice a creature, but then we get cards and another benefit. I like Deadly Dispute more because I like that the treasure can be used to pay for it again in the future. But this is still good. And in the right deck, if you've got stuff where when you gain life, your opponents lose life, and that's your game plan, it is very good for those decks. Regent's Authority for one white. Hard creature gets plus two plus two. If it's an enchantment or a legendary creature, instead it gets plus one plus one in a permanent one one counter. Since white and white green have a long history of having commanders and commander and in you know Oathbreaker wanting to also pull a lot of those legendary decks into the format, this is not terrible. This is actually a pretty good card. Again. I do feel like it's going to get too expensive too fast to justify it, but it can be really good early game if you're just trying to close out a game quickly. Repel the Vile. Can exile target creature with power 4 greater or exile target enchantment. Again, single target removal. It is modular, so it's better than a card that doesn't hit multiple permanents, but I probably wouldn't run it as a signature spell at a cost of 4. Return to action for one in a green. Target creature gets plus one plus zero oh, and lifelink, and when it would die, it returns to the battlefield tapped into our control. These type of rescue spells can be very good. They can be very fun to run in a deck if you are trying to combo out with creatures like Grey Merchant of Asphodel in your deck. Running a number of these can be very good for just getting Gary back into play and draining all your opponents out. However, as a signature spell, I don't think it's great. Season of Renewal, we can choose one or both, which is a little bit different. Return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. Return target enchantment from our graveyard to our hand. This is really good for those enchantment decks we're seeing because they're probably going to do both. It's good for a modular deck. Um, the fact that it lets us return two permanents for three mana is actually above the usual cost we get for something like this. So it's really good the first time. The second time we have to play it, it's pretty much on par, and then after that, we don't really want to use it again, so you really want to decide how you're going to use this sparingly. Again, green signature spells have a little bit more leeway, because we're more likely to ramp in that color well. Seismic Wave deals two damage to any target, one damage to each non-artifact creature target opponent controls. So this is a mini board wipe, and that's probably why I might think about taking it, especially if you're running something like Arc Bond or Stuff Eat All Deck, or Something where you can make use of dealing a damage to each uh, non-artifact creature an opponent controls. I wish it wasn't three mana, so because of that, it kind of edges itself out of being like a decent signature spell. Spell Pierce is a reprint, not good as a signature spell. Story Weave. I mean, if you're playing a lore deck, if you're playing a deck that is very, very focused on playing Sagas, I would run this as a signature spell because this can actually really probably get you pretty far in that situation in, in that deck. Because uh, I picture a world where I play Amichiko's, I can't remember what it is, but the one that gives plus one plus one to a creature for each enchantment you control, an artifact you control, I should say. Playing it, using this, pumping two creatures up to massive or one creature up to massive twice, 
and swinging and just blowing a person out of the game with the second ability. The first ability is okay. It is going to work in modified, but I wouldn't run it because of that. I would run it mostly because of the second ability. A suit up until end of turn target vehicle becomes a 4-5 and you draw a card. I wouldn't run this as a signature spell, but in a vehicle deck it is very good because there are going to be times in a vehicle deck, just like in a Voltron deck, where you don't have enough creatures to make your deck go, but you still need to make your vehicles go. So this is something that lets you do that, and the added bonus of drawing a card is very good. Cameo Safekeeping is, I would say, a good uh, signature spell, actually. It's a soft counter spell, basically, because it gives the creature hexproof and indestructible, and you gain two life. It is kind of a threat. It will uh, maybe make opponents think twice before targeting your creatures. I don't think this one is as likely to get you soft targeted out of the game as removal spells or board wipes in your command zone might. Protection spells are just usually safer. First, for knowledge, for two and a blue, you draw three cards and you discard two cards unless you discard an artifact. It's a reprint. Not great as a signature spell. I mean, three cards for three mana. It's not terrible. I guess it's two cards for three mana. Bolt Scourge for red is additional cost to cast it. We sacrifice an artifact. It deals two damage to a creature planeswalker or four damage if we actually sacrifice that permanent. Um, in the right deck with the right synergies, this could be very good. I'm Again, mostly I'm ranking it a little bit higher than I usually would because it can hit a planeswalker. Wanderer's Intervention for one and white. It deals four damage, target attacking or blocking creature. So we can't, this is the removal we get in white. Most white remover doesn't just get rid of something or it'll get rid of something temporarily. So the fact we have to wait till something's attacking or blocking is, is what we get. As far as being white removal, since it is damage based removal, that already makes it worse than anything that would exile. So I think it's actually pretty bad. Maybe as a card in general, we were young for three and a white. We up to two target creatures. He gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If we control an artifact and enchantment, it's the end that gets me there. Those creatures get lifelinks. I'd say no. Like, it's not good. It's too expensive. Um, it is plus four, four power across two creatures, but you're almost never going to get that second ability, and the commander tax is going to crush it as, as useful goes. You are already dead. I love the reference to this card. It definitely feels like uh, Fist of the North Star, I think, is the anime reference they're going for here. For black, you destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn and draw a card. Really simple, but you have to build around finding some other way to deal a big creature some amount of damage before this is useful. But because you've got that extra hoop to jump through, that decreases its value greatly as a spell. And that is actually all of them. We've gone around the whole circle, so let's go back. So that is all of the uh, instants in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that you could consider picking as a signature spell. I do have some strong favorites like Anchor Reality, which has, of course, started us off. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, as always, down below me here are the subscribers. This I know I'm going to screw up. Over here are my patrons. Okay, I've got to remember, I've got to do the opposite of where my actual computer screens are. I'm going to put another video up over here. <laughs> yes, I did it. I succeeded. Uh, that will probably be another deck tech or another video. Maybe it'll be something else related to Kamigawa if you're interested. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and thank you for stopping in Oathbreakers.